Oh boy, I can't wait to see the best opening sequence ever since in London 2012 or something. Oh, this is certainly the worst intro sequence I've ever seen. Well, at least until in Rio 2016, and especially noticeable with Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, the intros themselves might be a little bit more better than this is. Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, I am Jewel here, and I'm Blue, and we are the birds everyone for this point folks, and welcome for some more of the forms of the Maxi Toys videos. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ourselves the forms of another redo let's play for our channel. This time around, we are about to be returning back onto the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games series, where it comes to the forms of redoing let's plays and all that stuff. I think um, the last time we did done the uh, the Olympic Games series for Mario and Sonic let's play stuff is of course Rio 2016, and we're actually going to be doing a redo let's play of Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games for the Wii U. Now the reason why we're gonna able to do this is because we remember back in 2014 that this is originally be up. However though, there are some good things and there are some bad parts about the original Let's Play of this game. Now the good thing is, is the fact that the quality itself is pretty okay at best. However the bad thing is, is the commentary itself is downright quiet and all that stuff. Which once again, that um, you can't hear the actual commentary very well. So. Every now and then now, until when it gets to the point that this is now five years later, that hopefully the quality itself should be a lot more better than before, and especially noticeable of how the commentary itself will be a lot more better than before. So the obviously the main focus of the forms of the entire Let's Play of this game is obviously going to take place in Legend Showdown, which is basically a single player campaign in the forms of Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games, I gotta admit it for this point. So we'll jump right into the forms of the new game here, and a calm level we're going to be going for is the normal mode, because we feel like we're going to have to do for that specific stuff. So, anyway, enough about the awkwardness uh, commentary for this point, let's jump right in to Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games, and here's the actual cutscene. Alright, so let's get started. So 20 contenders from the worlds of Mario and Sonic join forces to compete in Legend Showdown. Alright then. To come out on top and win the Legend Trophy, they must triumph over tough opponents. The contenders split into teams of four and compete in events that takes place or that take place in five areas. Emerge victorious to take home the Alicious um, Legend Trophy. So that's how it's going to be for the majority of Legend Showdown. Complete areas to own different Mii outfit items of, of, for your Mii to wear. Try to complete them all. So even then, um, yeah, this is how the single player is going to be for this point, guys. Because basically what happens is, is that you're going to be uh, participating into five different areas, which... Each they have like four competitors, like for instance, for example, in area one that we actually are uh, playing as Sonic, Tails, Yoshi, and Donkey Kong, and then as soon as that cutscene shows up right there, as you can see, we come across into our double gangers of ourselves. So basically, in order to actually progress through the, each of these events, such as for example, the first event we're going to be hit onto is Alpine Skiing Downhill. Basically, in order to actually win these, is that you need to always come in first place. So, uh, for this first part, we'll go ahead and select Sonic the Hedgehog, because we are uh, blue birds, of course, except we're not hedgehogs or anything like that. So the main um, th uh, thing about the forms of this game is that, unlike the uh, 
the original Olympic Games, as well as the original Winter Olympic Games, and even London 2012 Olympic Games that does utilize the actual Wii Remote on its own. This game is the only time that we actually come across into ourselves the Wii Remote Plus for overall, or to be more accurate, the Wii Motion Plus, because that was a uh, thing of like other games that utilizes with the Wii Remote Motion Controls Motion Plus, such as like The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, for example, as well as some segments in Nintendo Land, that it does have a lot of emphasis on the forms of motion controls heavy. Whilst this does manage to occur, the motion controls too much. However, though, we'll get to the major criticism with this, though, until whenever we get to the continued progressioning where it comes to this Let's Play. So, this is how it goes with Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games. If you remember playing the... Uh, the Wii version specifically of the original Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games back in 2009. This plays very much exactly similar to the previous Winter Olympic Games, except this time around though, this is the first time ever that the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games game is now takes place in HD consoles. So, it's pretty cool for that time. However though, the actual depth of it might be a little bit too lacking for my taste. But we'll point that out whenever we get to the actual, at the ending portion of this Let's Play, so... But anywho though, um, because basically as you can see on the top right corner, as you can see, that we do realize that we got ourselves the actual, uh, the tiny little circle, which actually features the actual model of the Wii Remote. Or in this game sp specific, it's actually called the Wii Remote Plus, because in order to actually play this game specifically though, is that just like The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, is that you have to get yourself your Wii Remote pl uh, Motion Plus accessory, or if you have your spend your money on the actual expensive Wii Remote, such as like you get yourself Wii Motion Plus uh, built inside with it, well, you do need to also require that too. It doesn't matter which ones you're gonna go for. So even then, uh, I always attempt to go for uh, the red Wii Remote that does have the Wii Motion Plus inside it. So. Because that way, we don't have to deal with the forms of the complicated setup, unlike the forms of how it does it back on 2009, for instance. But yeah, as what Joel said earlier, is the fact that in order to actually progress from one event to another, is that you always have to came or come in first place for every single event. So the next event we have is speed skating 500 meters. So, basically, oh yeah, I forgot to mention about the forms of alpine skiing downhill. Uh, it's basically, it's like the same thing for how it does it in Vancouver 2010 version, except unlike that particular game, is the fact that, well, every time you're able to actually just to, um, start in each event, though, you always have to make sure you need to do a some sort of like a, uh, a registration thing, like you have to point to the Wii Remote at the screen, and then just simply trying to press the A button to select OK on this little blue box before you start the event. You know, it's kind of like the same thing for how it does it in most of, uh, you know, Mario Party games, like specifically Mario Party 9, for example. Well, some events exceptions, but either way, though, let's just go ahead and hold this posing position. And it looks like it doesn't seem to register on me very well, but whatever, we'll uh, get the start anyway, so. In this event right there is the fact that you have to do a some sort of like a rhythm-based uh, kind of technique. Because the more you do perfects, as you can see right there, you weren't able to actually get yourselves a nice uh, burst of speed. So, very self-explanatory what this is, but the only major criticism that most people seem to think about the fact that the only weakest part about the game is the actual motion controls themselves, which we'll point that out whenever we get to in some events, specifically in later on throughout the game. So, there we go, and we got ourselves our first new record, because yes, uh, we were expected to able to do this as in the forms of our current save file that we've got from long time ago. But unfortunately, due to the forms of 2018, some of my games did actually corrupt it for the actual save data at some point. Which, this means I have to go all the way back to the very beginning of the game. Which doesn't matter to me though, because every time you're able to do these kinds of stuff like this in the Legend Showdown, um, apparently though, you can't able to actually get yourselves a gold medals after doing so, so... Yeah, it seems, uh, promising enough as it is, so even then I was pretty swell. Alright, so next match we have, or in this case the next event rather, is gonna be take place in... Snowboard Cross. Yeah, very self-explanatory right there, and I think we should probably select, um, Tails for this specific event, because as for Donkey Kong, as far as I'm concerned, 
Well, we'll mention more on that later, so... Anyways, let's go ahead and use the Wii U gamepad for this. Some of these events can also utilize with... Uh, some events can be controlled by either the gamepad on its own, or even in some events, that allows you to able to only require it. Uh, the Wii Remote Plus uh, controller, which even then, uh, we'll point that out until when if we get to the future events. So, but even then, uh, there's not much else to discuss upon. So, yeah, today's day is the forms of uh, the 19th of December today. In this case, we got six days to go until specifically Christmas Day. So, this would be a perfect timing if we're able to do this around the same time as when Christmas is around the corner. So, yeah, it's a perfect timing though, Blue. I can have to admit it though right away. So anyways though, uh, the best strategy for uh, Snowboard Cross, as you can see right there, that when you come towards the forms of those specific curves, as you can see, uh, hold down the ZR button if you're trying to able to tilt it at the right moment for your momentum. Uh, that way you would able to get yourselves the uh, good burst of speed if you're trying to drift along with that specific stuff. You know, think of like Mario Kart, except there's no item system around here, so... Yeah, that could be summarized as such, draw. That could be summarized as that. So, yeah, feel free to want to explain about this before we're able to continue things on with the forms of this game. Um, recently, that Nintendo actually recently announced there was going to be some true DLC content for Luigi's Mansion 3. To be more specifically, in Scarescraper mode, as well as the forms of the one in uh, Screen Park, which I think it actually contains in... Scarescraper mode, I think you actually get alternate costumes, if I recall, just like the forms of Super Mario Odyssey costumes. And um, as far as Green Park, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you're actually going to be playing through new modes and all that stuff. And as far as the release date, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to be releasing until at some point in April 2020, which will take a long time to release those. But I'm very glad that was the case, because even then... And also there's going to be the forms of a special accessory, which is usually calls it uh, the Flashlight Type P, which this allows you to able to um, um, find the actual poultry pops. Which, by the way, that particular accessory will not, will, will not even to actually be usable in the story mode, because, you know, Poochie Pop was essentially the good guy of the forms of Luigi's Mansion 3, basically. Yeah, but we'll talk more on that later, though, before we're able to move on to the next part, so... Anyway, so once you, uh, make your way to the end of some of these areas of this entirety of Legend Showdown, we might actually come across into ourselves the first key. And what do we do with that? Well, you see that portal right there? We actually come across into ourselves the returning rival battles ever since in the past two games. Specifically, in the original Olympic Winter Games back in Vancouver 2010, as well as London 2012. However though, this will be the last Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games uh, series, well, specifically when you're trying to compete against with the Rivals thing, because even then, until Rio 2016, especially noticeable with the most recent game, Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, uh, it will become playable for the first time. So naturally speaking, this is the final game that usually just master utilizes the actual um, you know, rival characters as boss battles. So, for instance, the first rival we're going to be competing on is, uh, Bodo. Specifically, Team Bodo in Ice Hockey. And this, generally speaking, this is the second time that Bodo is becoming a rival character because if you think of London 2012 was the first thing that, uh, Bodo becomes a rival player on the London 2012 Olympic Games, like, usually takes place in uh, 100 freestyle swimming, as well as, uh, badminton doubles, so, at least even then, though, we come across into the team version of Bodo herself. So, basically, uh, in order to actually just, to uh, finish the actual areas as far as I'm concerned, that you do need to able to win, uh, compete against with the actual rival, uh, characters and all that stuff. You know, think of, like, the other games, though, except with the forms of, well, in HD for the first time. And also, same applies with, uh, some sort of, like, a weird, uh, collusion control sometimes, which, uh, we'll point that out until whenever we get to the future events. So, it's not so bad in the beginning, though, because it will take you a lot of practice if you're trying to able to do so already. So, but even then, though, uh, as you can tell right there, that we need to able to keep on passing, because every time you're able to let the gauge full up, basically what that is, is the fact that this allows you to able to perform a power shot, which, even then, 
We'll point that out, and looks like Birdo's trying to able to get a goal, but too bad for you, because looks like we actually did uh, block the plunk right there. So, yeah, top notch that is. So, let's go ahead and use the power shot from here, and... Oh, really? Wow, you're so smart right there. But anyway, though, uh, there's not much else we can say about the forms of Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games as far as they're concerned. Despite the fact that this is the, uh, out of all the actual Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games series as of now, this is by far the most longest title in the whole entire series, which, believe me, they somehow managed to place in Sochi 2014, and after that, it was Olympic Winter Games. It was like, that's a bit of a mouthful right there, which I will admit though right away. It is definitely is one of the longer title names of the entire series so far. Nonetheless, though, it could be potential being off uh, in the future for the sake of, uh, well, I don't know what I say about it. So anyways, though, so basically, in face-off right here, so hopefully we could able to get ourselves our first score here. Despite uh, the first period, we didn't, do, we didn't go so well just because, well, we ended up in a tie somehow with, uh, well, with no points specifically. So, kind of weird, though, but I... Although, conveniently enough though, draw, this will be actually be the only time that in a Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games kind of game, uh, this is the only installments to able to feature the returning new voice actors ever since in Sonic Colors and stuff like that, like, you know, Roger Craig Smith and Kate Higgins and all the other jazz. Yeah, because eventually in Rio 2016, and especially notice for Tokyo 2020, it might be still exactly the same voice actors, like, well, Usually Mike Pollock is one of them, and as well as uh, Roger Craig Smith. As far as other characters as far as the concern, well, it might be entirely different. It depends on the, uh, you know. I do apologize for the actual commentary for this point, guys. I know it's definitely a lot better than he forms of how it does it in uh, the previous uh, um, Let's Play of this back in 2014, which, ironically enough, we did this in exactly the same time as when Mario Kart 7 Let's Play has been up as well as Mario Party Island Tour, but I think it's most likely because we could, we just simply rush too many of those things all at once, so, but thankfully though, we don't do that anymore though, because we have to take care of the forms of the different system during the forms of next year, specifically with the uploading schedules in mind, so, yeah, and basically the entire portion of that specific event is controlled with the Wii U gamepad, which, uh, for the most part is not too bad though, but it's just that, the only questionable thing about this event right here is the fact that, well, usually it just has, it has like a, some sort of like a weird uh, momentum movement right there. And especially noticeable with how the fact that, well, let's just uh, go ahead and, uh, yeah, if you utilize the power shot move, uh, basically you can either use your finger or the actual uh, stylus for your Wii U gamepad. And then if you draw certain parts of the actual power shot right there, then you will instantly get a score, so that's something worth keep that in mind. Although, the thing is about this is, is the fact that, well, uh, we didn't get one of the Olympic Winter Games for Mario and Sonic game on 2018, most notably because of the different company that usually owns that, so... And look at that, we got about, I think we got about three points out of, uh, well, 3-0 from, uh, uh, Team Bodo right there, so... Top notch, Blue. Top notch. And then as soon as you beat the actual rifles, then basically, you're basically done with the actual area. And then the actual key right there is being touched to the forms of that specific wall. It's now yours. So yeah, area one complete. So I think we've only got about four areas to go. So even then, despite how the videos themselves might get a lot shorter, so even then though, we'll have to classify that but with one Little exception, but we'll point that out. So, and also, after, every time you uh, complete one of those areas, you actually get yourselves the actual results screen based off of how much points you get based off of what event you're in. Such as, like, um, you know, Alpine Skiing Downhill, we got 1,000 points. And also, since we did manage to able to get ourselves uh, 2,000 or something, well, basically what happens is, or 2,800 points per se, we actually get some of these ranks depending on how much points you grab in total during each event. So yeah, it's pretty interesting, but we'll try our best if we're able to aim for the highest scores possible, specifically the A+, 
rank, but even then I will point things out in journey forms of uh, each days and beyond before Christmas Day is about to start. So, you know, as you can see right there, we have a choice between Area 2 or Area 3. It really doesn't matter which ones you're going to go through, but let's just say we'll go for the actual chronological order draw, just in case if no one gets confused by this. So, yeah, with that being said, join us next time on Let's Play Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games, is that we're about to get started with Area 2 in Legend Showdown. So see you guys tomorrow. Later, fellas. See you then.